Chapter 1 of Slicko the Jumping Squirrel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Slicko the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum. Chapter 1 Slicko Learns to Jump. Halfway up the side of a tall tree, there was a round hole in the trunk. The hole was lined with soft, dried leaves and bits of white fluffy cotton from the milkweed plant and if you looked very carefully at the hole you might see peering from it a little head like that of a very small kitten and a pair of very bright eyes but it was not a kitten that looked from the little hole in the trunk of the tree kitties can climb trees but they do not like to live in them they would rather have a warm place behind the stove with a nice saucer of milk. Now, if I tell you that the little creatures who lived in this whole nest had big fluffy tails and that they could sit up on their hind legs and eat nuts, I'm sure you can guess what they were. Squirrels, that's it. In the nest, halfway up the big tree in the woods lived a family of gray squirrels. And I'm gonna tell you about them or rather more particularly about one of the little girl squirrels whose name was Slicko. One morning, Mrs. Squirrel, who had gotten up out of the nest early to go out and get some breakfast for her little ones, came back very quickly, jumping from one tree branch to another and fairly scrambling down into the nest where the little boy and girl squirrels of her family were still asleep. Why, what's the matter, mother? asked Mr. Squirrel in the queer, chattering language he and his wife used. Why are you in such a hurry this morning? See, you've dropped a lot of nuts. He looked out over the edge of the nest, down to the ground, where he saw some of the nuts Mrs. Squirrel had dropped. She had been bringing them home for breakfast. What made you run so? asked Mr. Squirrel, who had stayed home with the little ones while his wife went after nuts. Well, I guess you'd have hurried too, said Mama Squirrel, if you saw what I saw. What was it? asked Mr. Squirrel, and he pulled his head in from the nest hole, so that if any bad animals were down below on the ground, they could not see him. It was a man with a dog and a gun, said Mrs. Squirrel. He was hunting, and I'm almost sure he saw me. My, that would be too bad, exclaimed Mr. Squirrel. Do you think he followed you to shoot you? I hope not, said Mrs. Squirrel. I ran as fast as I could when I saw him, and I did not hear his gun go off, but I did hear the dog bark. Hmm, said Mr. Squirrel in his own language, and he seemed as worried as your papa might if he heard there was a bad animal or a runaway horse coming after you. So the hunter did not shoot his gun, eh? Not that I heard, Aunt, answered Mrs. Squirrel, but he may be trying to find this nest. I'll look out to see if he's coming, said Mr. Squirrel. Be careful he doesn't see you, said Mrs. Squirrel. I will, replied her husband. And then he carefully, carefully peeked out of the hole of the nest in the hollow trunk of the tree. Squirrels are smarter than we think. Though they do not know how to shoot a gun, they know that a gun can hurt them. And when one is shot off in the woods, all the squirrels and the birds and wild creatures are very much frightened and run to hide. So Mr. Squirrel looked out to see if he could see a man with a gun and a dog, but he saw nothing and he was glad of it. I guess he didn't see which way he went, Mama, he said to his wife. Now he will give the children their breakfast and then we must begin teaching them their lessons. For if hunters with dogs and guns are to come to our woods, it is time our little ones knew how to look after themselves and how to hide and jump to safe places. I think so too, said Mrs. Squirrel. Wake up, children, she cried. Come, Slicko, hurry up, Chatter. Come, Fluffy and Nutto. Breakfast is ready. Four little squirrels, two boys and two girls, awoke in the tree nest and sat up on their hind legs in the soft leaves and cotton. They saw the nuts their mother had brought and at once began eating them. That was all they had to do to get ready for breakfast. The squirrel children did not have to dress, for they wore fur suits all the year round, never taking them off. In winter, 
their fur grew much thicker than in the summer to keep them warmer the squirrel children did not have to wash themselves in a basin all any of them did was to wet one paw with his little red tongue and wipe it over his face then he was washed but you wouldn't like to do that i'm sure come children eat your breakfast said mrs squirrel and then you're going to have a new lesson a new lesson chattered slicko one of the girl squirrels to her mamma speaking in a language that you or i could not have understood what kind of a lesson is it going to be you see the squirrel children had been taught how to gnaw open hard nuts and to take out the sweet juicy kernels inside they had been taught how to climb trees and wash their faces but there were many other things for them to learn slicko was the largest of the squirrel children and she asked the most questions what is your lesson going to be mother slicko wanted to know i hope it's going to be a sleeping lesson said fluffy one of the boy squirrels i'm sleepy yet and he yawned and stretched himself just like a little monkey oh fie on you said papa squirrels should be lively and hop about when they awake in the morning come now if you have finished your nuts your mamma and i will teach you a new lesson and one that you must learn well or there may be danger for you pooh i'm not afraid what sort of danger asked nutto the other boy squirrel he was called nutto because he was so fond of eating chestnuts oh i'm afraid said chatter the littlest girl squirrel don't say such scary things nutto and chatter looked over the edge of the nest as though she might see a big hawk bird sweeping down for her ma papa and mamma had told her to always hide when a big hawk flew over the woods but no hawk was in sight now you are going to have some jumping lessons went on mr squirrel after you learn to jump i will tell you why you see the papa squirrel did not want just then to tell the little ones about their mamma having seen a hunter man with a dog and a gun for fear if he did they might be too frightened to come out of the nest and learn to jump but mr squirrel knew there was no danger near just then at any rate and he wanted his children to be as brave as they could be soon after the breakfast nuts were eaten the four little squirrels went out on a straight branch that stuck out from the tree trunk near the nest papa and mamma squirrel stood there with them now this is the idea said mr squirrel in his chattering language that you or i could not have understood but which is as plain to the little squirrels as a papa dog's language is to a puppy or a mamma cat's mewing to her little kittens you are going to learn to jump said mr squirrel what's a jump asked slicko who as i have said was always asking questions she asked more questions than her two brothers and her sister together but slicko wanted to know things see exclaimed mr squirrel this is a jump now i am on this limb beside you now watch he gave a little spring or jump through the air and landed on a branch of another tree some distance off that is a jump said mr squirrel it is getting from one branch to another without running or walking it's a quick way of walking i suppose you could call it and when you are in a hurry as when someone is chasing you and you have no time to run or walk you must jump now let me see you jump down here just as i did come on all of you yes go on said mamma squirrel who was still on the tree limb by the nest you little squirrels must learn to jump that is the one big lesson left for you to learn slicko looked at chatter fluffy looked at noto they all looked down at their papa on the lower limb come on don't be afraid called mr squirrel jump you won't be hurt but but i'm afraid said noto who you remember had said he was not at all frightened oh you mustn't be afraid said mr squirrel there is nothing to hurt you and i'm sure you can jump if you try give a good hard spring and you'll land down here on the limb beside me besides if you do fall the ground is covered with soft leaves and you won't be hurt come on jump but the little squirrels did not want to 
You go first, said Nutto to Fluffy. No, I'd rather watch you go first, spoke Fluffy. Maybe Chatter will go, suggested Nutto. The girls are not as heavy as we are, and they won't be hurt if they fall. One of you boys ought to go first, said Slicko. You are always saying you're not afraid. You jump first, Nutto, and Chatter, and I will come after you. Oh, I don't want to, said Nutto. And there the four little squirrels stood on a limb near the nest, each one afraid to jump. Their papa stood waiting for them, and he kept thinking that if the hunter and his dog should come along then, the little squirrels would be in danger of being shot if they did not know how to jump out of the way and hide. Come on, you must learn how to jump, called Mrs. Squirrel. Slicko took a long breath. After all, she did ask a number of questions. Slicko was rather brave. I'm going to jump, she said. That's the girl, cried her father. Come on, jump down here beside me. Slicko moved over close to the edge of the tree branch. Then with another long breath, such as a boy takes before he dives when he is swimming, Slicko jumped from the tree branch. She found herself sailing through the air. At first, she was greatly frightened. She spread out her tail, and then she found that she was floating through the air, almost as gently as a bird's feather. Her tail helped her to fall gently, for it was just like a big open umbrella, and held her up as the parachute holds up the man who jumps from a balloon. There goes Slicko, cried her mama. Slicko is learning to jump. Down, 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 through the air went Slicko, the jumping squirrel. Would she land on the tree branch beside her father? Slicko certainly hoped so, but still it was her first jump. End of chapter one, recording by Laura Stinchcombe. Chapter Two of Slicko, the Jumping Squirrel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Slicko, the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum. Chapter Two. Slicko meets Squinty. That's the way to do it, cried Mrs. Squirrel as she saw Slicko sailing down through the air toward the limb on which was perched Mr. Squirrel. Don't be afraid, you'll get down all right, called Mr. Squirrel. Slicko fluffed out her tail as wide as she could. She felt that it was her tail which would save her from landing too hard and hurting her paws. Nearer and nearer she came to the limb on which was her papa. Here you are, cried Mr. Squirrel a moment later, and with a little shaking up, Slicko found herself safely beside her dear papa. Wasn't that nice? asked Mr. Squirrel, moving over close beside his little girl. Oh, indeed it was, said Slicko breathing a little faster than usual, for this was her first jump, you see. Now, Chatter, Fluffy, and Nutto, it's your turns, said Mrs. Squirrel. See, Slicko made a good jump, and you could each do the same. Come on. Yes, do, said Mr. Squirrel. You really must learn to jump, and then I'll tell you why. Oh, is it a secret? asked Chatter, the other little girl squirrel. She was a sister to Slicko. Yes, it's a secret, answered Mrs. Squirrel. Now, I am not quite sure about it, but I suppose girl squirrels want to hear a secret just as much as real girls do, and I have always found that if you wanted to get a real little girl to do anything for you, that she would do it ever so much more quickly if she thought there was a secret about it. Perhaps that is why Chatter made up her mind to jump, as Slicko had done. Mind, I'm not saying for sure, for I don't know, but maybe it was so. Anyhow, 
Chatter moved over close to the edge of the tree limb. She looked down to where her papa and Slicko sat up on their hind legs, watching her. Here I come. Catch me, spoke Chatter. All right, don't be afraid, answered her papa. You won't fall. Chatter gave a jump, and down she went. Almost before she knew it, she had landed on a smooth place on the limb, close beside her sister and papa. There, I did it, cried Chatter, in delight. Of course you did, said Slicko. Wasn't it fine? It certainly was, agreed Chatter. Come now, the girls have jumped, and you boys mustn't let them get ahead of you, called Mr. Squirrel to Nutto and Fluffy. Come on, jump down here. Well, of course, the boy squirrels weren't going to let the girl squirrels beat them, so first Nutto jumped and then Fluffy. There, now you have all learned to jump, said Mrs. Squirrel. Of course, this is only the beginning. You must practice every day, just as you did when you were learning to climb trees by sticking your sharp toenails in the soft bark. Every day you do a little jumping. But why, Mama? asked Slicko. Is that the secret? That is the secret, answered Mr. Squirrel. You must learn to jump, because your mamma saw a hunter man with a gun and dog in our woods this morning, and we must be ready to run away and hide if he should find our nest. And as you cannot always run or walk and climb trees, you must need to know how to jump so you can jump out of danger. That is why we gave you jumping lessons today. Now, when you are all rested, you must jump some more, and you must learn to jump up as well as jump down, though jumping down is easier. The squirrel children asked many questions about the hunter man and his dog and gun, and Papa and Mama Squirrel told their little ones all they knew, warning them always to hide when they saw a man with a gun. Well, I'm going to learn to jump farther and higher, said Slicko. No hunter is going to catch me if I can help it. So Slicko began practicing jumping, going from one tree branch to another, up and down and sideways. The papa and mamma squirrel watched on all sides while their children were jumping to make sure the hunter man did not come. Whether it was because Slicko was larger and stronger than her brothers and sisters, or because she practiced harder, I do not know, but it is certain that in a few days Slicko was the best jumping squirrel in that part of the woods. She could jump farther than could chatter, and even though Nutto and Fluffy were boy squirrels, Slicko could beat them. Yes, Slicko is certainly a fine jumper, said Mrs. Squirrel to her husband one day. She can jump almost as far as we can. Well, I hope she's careful, spoke Mr. Squirrel. I was over near the swamp today, looking to see if I could find any sweet flag root for supper, and I heard a noise like a gun. That hunter man is still in the woods. Maybe it was thunder you heard, said Mrs. Squirrel. No, I'm sure it was a gun of the hunter man, went on her husband. Well, I'm glad the little ones can jump. It will help them to keep out of his way. Indeed it will, said Mrs. Squirrel. For a week or so after this, the little squirrels practiced jumping every day. As soon as they had had their breakfast of nuts or oats or wheat, which their papa or mamma brought in from the farmer's fields, the little squirrels would begin jumping. Sometimes they would run up and down the tree trunks, and again they would pretend to hide under the leaves, 
for their parents had told them that was a good way to keep out of sight when there was any danger in the forest the squirrel family lived in the woods a very nice woods indeed with many green trees growing in it the ground in some places was covered with brown leaves that had fallen off the trees and in other places there was soft green moss like the velvet carpet in the parlor at your house and not far from the tree where slicko and the other squirrels lived was a pretty brook that ran through the wood making nice music as it trickled over the stones the water was cool and good to drink and often slicko and her brothers and sisters would come to the edge of the brook to bathe or get a drink one day after she had practiced her jumping lesson for some time slicko said to her sister chatter come on let's take a little walk in the woods it's nearly time for chestnuts to be ripe and we may find some oh i don't want to go chatter said i am tired from having jumped so much i am going to lie down on the green moss and go to sleep oh then will you come nutto asked slicko of her brother no for fluffy and i are going to hunt hickory nuts said the boy squirrel you had better come with us chestnuts are not ripe yet you won't find any but if you come with us you'll find some hickory nuts oh i think i can find some chestnuts spoke slicko and then as neither her brothers nor her sister would come with her the little girl jumping squirrel started off in the woods by herself she ran along on the ground a little way then she climbed up a tree and running out on a branch of that she leaped from the end of it to the end of another branch in a tree a little further on slicko was a good jumper in this way she hurried on until she was quite away from her home nest all of a sudden slicko heard a noise in the bushes as if some big animal were breaking away through them my i hope that isn't the hunter man and his dog exclaimed slicko in a whisper to herself i had better be careful and take a look before i go on any farther so the little jumping squirrel cuddled down under some leaves on the tree branch where she was sitting and peered out at first she could see nothing except the bushes below her waving as something pushed through them whatever it was it seemed to be coming nearer and nearer her tree slicko felt sure it was the hunter man and she was getting ready to give a big jump and hurry home to the nest when all at once she saw something sort of pink and white come out of the bush as soon as slicko saw this she knew it was not a hunter man for it walked on four feet whereas a hunter walks on two feet why it's a little pig exclaimed slicko looking down she knew it was a pig because not far from the woods where she lived there was a farm and on the farm was a pen of pigs slicko had seen them once yes that's a pig i'm not afraid of him said the little squirrel girl hello she called down to the pig who was rooting along in the ground looking for something to eat i suppose hello called slicko what's your name oh hello how you frightened me calling that way answered the pig my name is squinty what's yours now if you had been listening to this talk between the two animals the squirrel and the pig all you would have heard would have been something like this chatter chat chat chit chit chirp chirr and then if if woof woof uh, uh. 
one was the squirrel talking and the other was the pig answering of course it would not sound like real talk such as you use but it was real enough for slicko and squinty and they could understand each other very well they could also understand man talk ear talk also as i will tell you a little later but neither slicko nor squinty could speak man language ha huh, so your name is squinty eh asked slicko of the little pig why are you called such a funny name because one of my eyes squints a little was the answer see squinty looked up to show slicko and the little pig was such a funny picture as he stood there with one eye partly shut and the other wide open with his head on one side and one ear cocked forward and the other backward he was so funny i say that slicko could not help laughing huh what are you laughing at asked squinty in his funny grunting voice with his little flat rubbery nose wiggling sideways and also up and down i am laughing at you answered slicko excuse me but i can't help it you are so funny and you have such a funny name oh i don't mind being laughed at said squinty with a sort of pig laugh i am glad if you want to laugh for it's better to laugh than cry and i don't mind my funny name he said i think that was very nice of squinty to say don't you i am glad i met you said the little girl squirrel at first i thought you were a hunter in the bushes and i thought you were some one chasing me when you called that way said squinty but you haven't told me your name yet then slicko led the little pig to where there were some acorn nuts and squinty ate them i am slicko the jumping squirrel was the answer and i am hunting in these woods for some chestnuts what are you doing here i am here because i have run away said squinty i am looking for something to eat are hickory nuts good very good slicko answered i'll see if i can find some for each of us the little squirrel found some hickory nuts but they were so hard that squinty the comical pig could not eat them i guess you'd like some acorns they are softer slicko said indeed i would thank you spoke squinty then slicko led the little pig to where there were some acorn nuts and squinty ate them very glad he was to get them too for he was quite hungry why are you called slicko asked squinty when he did not feel so hungry as at first my mamma called me that answered the little squirrel because my fur is so slick and shiny it's a good name said squinty don't you want to travel along with me through the woods and have adventures thank you no i guess not replied slicko hark what's that they both listened and heard a sound like chatter chatter chat chit chat chir what is it asked squinty in a whisper that is my mamma calling me answered slicko i must go back to the nest now good-bye funny little pig good-bye answered squinty and he went on looking for adventures he had many of them and i have told you about them in the first of these books called squinty the comical pig he was bought by a boy taught to do many tricks and finally ran back again to his home in the pen on the farm after slicko had said good-bye to squinty the comical pig the little girl squirrel ran and jumped on through the woods for her mother kept calling her to come to the nest my i hope nothing has happened said slicko as she hurried on 
and I didn't find any chestnuts, she said, as she looked at the few hickory notes she was bringing home. Fluffy and Nutto will laugh at me, but I don't care. Pretty soon Slicko reached the nest. My, where have you been? asked her mamma. Looking for chestnuts, answered Slicko. Did you find any? asked Nutto as he and his brother came climbing up the tree just then. No, but I found some hickory nuts and some acorns, and I gave some acorns to a cute little pig, said Slicko, explaining how she had met Squinty. I wish we had gone with you, said Fluffy. I'd like to have seen that pig. Come on, Nutto, let's go out and see if we can find him in the woods. No, you must not go away, chattered Mrs. Squirrel. I want you all to stay here. Something has happened, and we shall have to go away from our nice nest. Go away from our nest, cried Slicko in surprise. Yes, answered Mrs. Squirrel. It is no longer safe to stay here, but here comes your papa. He will tell you all about it. We are in great danger and that is why I called you all back. Now, listen to what your papa has to say. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 of Slicko, the Jumping Squirrel This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Slicko, the Jumping Squirrel, by Richard Barnum. Chapter 3. Slicko Goes on a Visit. Mr. Squirrel came along, hurrying and jumping through the leafy branches of the trees, as fast as he could come. When he was still some distance away from the nest, he took a long jump and landed on the limb near the hole in the tree. Did you see him? asked Mrs. Squirrel. Yes, he is in the woods, chattered Mr. Squirrel. But he may not be here for some minutes. We have time to run and hide and we better not keep together. We must all go different ways, and then he will not find us so easily. Oh, what is it? cried Slicko. What has happened? The hunter man and his dog have found out where our nest is, said Mrs. Squirrel. At any minute he may come here to shoot us or catch us. Oh, how dreadful! cried Chatter and even Nutto, who was supposed to be very brave for a squirrel, looked frightened. But don't worry too much, said Mr. Squirrel. I have seen the hunter in time, him and his dog and gun, and we will get safely away from him. Come now, we will separate, each going a different way, then the hunter will not find us, I hope. But where shall we go? asked Clicko. And what shall we do for something to eat and a place to sleep nights if we go away from our home nest? Well, you squirrels are old enough now to hunt food for yourselves, said Mrs. Squirrel. I am glad of that, for I shall not worry so much about you, and you know how to run and jump. I am glad we learned how to jump in time, said Slicko. Yes, if you had waited and kept on putting it off, said Mr. Squirrel, you would not now be ready to run and hide away from the hunter, and be able to take care of yourselves. As for a place to sleep, your mother and I are going to send you all on visits to our friends or relations. You can stay with them for a while, until it will be safe for us all to come back to our nest again. Oh, then, we are going on a visit, 
exclaimed Slicko. Something like that, yes, answered her father. And we must hurry, too, for the hunter may be here any minute. I passed him in the woods, and he was coming this way. Did he see you, Papa? asked Nutto. No, for I kept well behind the leaves and hurried on. My, how that dog did bark, though. He seemed very savage. Squinty, the comical pig, told me of a dog he knew, said Slicko, but he said that dog was kind and gentle. His name was Don. This dog's name wasn't Don, I'm sure of that, spoke Mr. Squirrel, but we must not stay talking here. Scatter, every one of you. Nutto and Fluffy, you go over to Grandma Beechnut's nest and stay with him. I don't believe the hunter knows where that is. Chatter, you stay with Mr. and Mrs. Acorn, the squirrels who live in the hollow stump. Your mother and I will go off in the woods and make a new nest. So, if we cannot come back to our old one, we will still have a home when winter comes. But what am I to do? asked Slicko. Where am I to go? I have not forgotten you, said Mrs. Squirrel. You can go over and stay with your Aunt Whitey until it is safe. Your aunt will be glad to have you, for she lives all alone, and she has room for only one small squirrel in her nest besides herself. You run over there and tell her all that has happened, how the hunter has found our nest. And go quickly, suddenly cried Mr. Squirrel. Here the hunter man comes, now, with his dog. Just then there sounded through the woods, Bow, woo, bow, woo, bow, woo. That's the dog, said Mr. Squirrel. Hurry, children, and don't forget the lessons we have taught you. We won't, promised Slicko. Then came another sound, a dreadful noise, like thunder. Bang! sounded through the woods, making the leaves on the trees shake. That's the hunter's gun, exclaimed Nutto. Run, everybody! Off through the woods scampered Slicko, her father and mother, and her brothers and sisters. Slicko climbed up one tree, jumped into another, and still another. I don't believe the hunter and his dogs will get me, thought Slicko, as she hurried on toward the nest where her Aunt Whitey lived. Pretty soon, the hunter man and his dog came to the foot of the tree where Slicko used to live. Ha! There's that squirrel nest I saw the other day, said the man to himself. I wonder if there are any in it. I'll wait a while and see if I can shoot any of them for my dinner. Poo, woo, poo, woo, barked the dog. Perhaps he too wanted some squirrels for his dinner. All around the foot of the tree ran the dog, barking as loudly as he could. Maybe he was hoping he could scare the squirrels out of the nest so his master could shoot them with his gun. The man waited and waited, looking up at the hole in the trunk of the tree where he knew the squirrels had lived. But he did not know they had gone. That was the time the squirrels were smarter than the hunter. Several hours passed, and still the man waited. Every now and then he would look up at the hole with his gun all ready to shoot, and the dog, who had been running off in the woods looking for more squirrels, would come back barking louder than ever. Well, I guess those squirrels have gone away, Carlo, the man finally said to his dog. It is of no use for us to stay here. Come, we will go look for other squirrels to shoot. Poo, 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 woo. That will be fun, barked Carlo. 
of course being a dog he did not know any better and so the hunter man went away from the empty nest where slicko and the other squirrels had lived all this while slicko the jumping squirrel was hurrying along through the woods toward the nest of her aunt whitey slicko's aunt had that name because there was a white spot on the end of her tail mrs whitey and mrs squirrel were sisters and of course that made the squirrel with the white on the end of her tail slicko's aunt and slicko liked aunt whitey very much there were always plenty of nuts in aunt whitey's nest and slicko as well as her brothers and sisters liked to come on a visit but this time slicko was all alone pretty soon the little jumping girl squirrel came to the tall tree where aunt whitey lived now i must be very careful thought slicko i must wait before running in to see if any hunter men or dogs or other enemies are watching me for if they are they would see where i go in and they could find the nest and maybe catch aunt whitey and me squirrels like birds and other woodland creatures do not like human beings to know where their nests or homes are so they take care to make the front doors in such a way they cannot easily be seen and when the forest creatures go in they always look around first to see that no enemy is watching in that way they keep their homes or nests secret they have to for they have so many enemies slicko looked all around and seeing no dogs wild animals or hunter men on the watch to spy on her aunt's nest the little squirrel scrambled up the tree sticking her sharp toenails in the soft bark as she had been taught to do when slicko was half way up she saw a hole in the tree just such a hole as at her nest at home this was the front door to the home of her aunt slicko gave two or three taps on the bark with her front paw the little girl squirrel always did this when she called on mrs whitey so the squirrel lady would know it was one of her little friends or relations and not a bad owl or hawk bird wanting to eat her up slicko expected to hear her aunt chatter as she always did come in and have some nuts but there was no answer slicko knocked again with her little paw and then thinking her aunt might be asleep the little jumping squirrel gave a little hop down inside the nest it was just like the nest at home which she and the others had left because of the danger from the hunter man at first coming in the dark nest after having been out in the bright sunlight slicko could see nothing just as when you come into the house after having walked along the snowy road from school you have to wait until your eyes get used to the darker house it was that way with slicko pretty soon however she could look about the nest and then her heart grew sad for she saw that aunt whitey did not live there any more the nest was deserted and empty most of the soft leaves and the cotton from the milkweed plant had been tossed out the nest was all upset most of the nuts were gone and it looked as though some boy or man or animal had been inside catching the squirrel lady and taking the nuts she had stored away to eat oh dear thought slicko this is terrible aunt whitey has either run away or been caught there is no one here to take me 
what shall i do can i stay here all alone oh dear isn't it too bad slicko cowered down in the empty nest and wondered what she should do now that she had no home to go back to end of chapter three Chapter 4 of Slicko, the Jumping Squirrel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. Slicko, the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum chapter four slicko sees a circus for a few minutes after jumping down into the empty nest of her aunt whitey little slicko did not know what to do it had all happened so suddenly the breaking up of the family each one going to a different place to hide the coming of slicko to these woods and the finding of the empty nest that the little squirrel did not know what to think of it. Slicko listened as sharply as she could for any sounds of danger. She bent her two little ears forward, just as her mamma had told her to do when she wanted to listen to any far-off sounds. But Slicko could hear nothing. That is, she could hear nothing that sounded like danger. Of course she could hear the wind blowing through the trees, the singing of the grasshoppers, the call of the birds, and noises like that. And none of these sounds meant any harm to the little squirrel. She had heard them all her life. Oh, but it is so lonesome, whispered Slicko to herself. She did not want to speak aloud in her queer little chattering voice for fear someone like a bad dog or a snake would hear her and yet slicko wanted to talk to someone even if it was only herself she lifted up her head from where she had nestled it down among the dry leaves in her aunt's nest and looked about her the nest was rather dark but slicko could see better now and what she saw made her sure that her aunt had either been taken away by some enemy or had run off in a great hurry. For the nest was all upset. The leaves were scattered about and most of the nuts were gone. Well, I guess I'd better stay here for a while, thought Slicko to herself. There are a few nuts here and I can eat them when I get hungry. When I want more, I shall have to go out and get them, but by that time it may be safe. Yes, I'll stay here tonight, anyhow. Slicko peeped out of the opening to the nest. It was a sort of front door to the squirrel house. Slicko could see that it was getting dark in the woods, that night was coming on and night slicko knew was no time for a little girl squirrel to be alone in the forest there were big-eyed owls flying about then and other enemies that might catch her so i shall be better off staying in the nest even if aunt whitey isn't at home thought slicko poor aunt whitey she whispered i wonder where she can be then Slicko happened to think that perhaps her squirrel aunt might be hiding outside somewhere, as wild animals often do hide near their nests or homes whenever they have been frightened away. I'll call to her, said Slicko to herself. Going softly to the opening to the nest, Slicko put out her head and called, Auntie! Auntie Whitey, where are you? She listened, but all she heard 
in reply was the singing of a robin the call of a grasshopper and the noise of the wind in the trees i guess she has gone far off thought slicko well i will stay here until i find some other place to go oh dear if mamma and papa only knew i was here all by myself they would come to me or take me with them but now i shall have to stay all alone oh dear it was the first time little slicko had ever been alone at night but she was going to be brave little animals have to be brave whether they want to or not and they have to leave their homes and find their own things to eat much younger than do real children so in a way animals do not so much mind being away from their papas and mammas as you children would at first slicko was pretty lonesome she shivered and cuddled down in the leaves of her aunt's nest and wished she had fluffy and nutto and her sister chatter to play with they had always played little jumping or running games before going to sleep nights but now slicko was all alone and had no one to play with but as i have said slicko was going to be brave after the little jumping squirrel got over her first feeling of fright she began to be hungry there were a few nuts left in the nest and slicko ate some of them and felt better and now i must make a warm place to sleep she thought her mother had taught her how to make herself a bed in the dry leaves and now slicko did this she smoothed out a little hole and pulled up some leaves that would fall over her and cover her up like a blanket when she went to sleep for though it was not yet winter it was very cool in the woods at night soon slicko was fast asleep animals go to sleep very easily when they have eaten and are not frightened they do not have to be sung to nor told stories and they do not have to have the light turned down low they always go to bed without a light once in the middle of the night slicko was awakened she heard a noise at the opening of the nest a scratching sort of noise and it sounded as though someone were trying to come in oh dear i wonder who it can be thought slicko but i'm not going to get up to look she went on no indeed instead she covered herself up deeper in the leaves and tried to go to sleep she could not though for the noise kept up and then all of a sudden something hooted woo 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 to woo oh it's an owl thought slicko a big owl but he can't get in here to eat me i'm safe maybe that's the owl that drove aunt whitey out of her nest once more the owl hooted and then slicko heard the flapping of its wings as it flew away he didn't get me to that time thought slicko but i must be very careful very careful soon the little girl squirrel was asleep again and when next she awakened the sun was shining down through the hole into the nest oh good it's morning chattered slicko now the owl can't get me slicko knew that owls fly only at night for they have such funny eyes that sunlight makes them almost blind and they cannot see to catch little squirrels so slicko knew she was safe for a while at least now for breakfast 
then to wash my face and paws and we'll see what happens whispered slicko to herself it did not take long to eat the nuts for breakfast then slicko felt thirsty she knew there was a nice spring of water not far from her aunt's nest for when she had come visiting other times she had gone to it to get a drink and i wonder if it would be safe now thought slicko i'll take a look and see she peered from the nest and saw nothing to frighten her some birds were flitting through the leafy trees and down on the ground some little hop toads were jumping about perhaps they were playing some game as you play tag for you know animals have fun just as children do though to be sure it's a different kind of fun yes i'm going to get a drink said slicko and she slipped out of the nest and began to climb down the side of the tree but she was very careful how she did it for she knew danger might be near though she could not see it she ran quickly halfway round the tree and stayed there a second with her body held flat against the trunk slicko was colored gray and the tree bark was a sort of gray so unless you had looked very sharply you might not have seen her yourself until slicko moved while she was holding herself there very quietly slicko was looking about to see if the owl or any other bad bird or animal were in sight but she saw nothing and then she scrambled down to the ground and ran to the spring taking a good drink of the cool water slicko washed her paws and face in it then she combed out her tail with her claws for all squirrels are very clean and tidy animals well i wonder what i shall do now thought slicko i guess i'll have to stay in aunt whitey's nest for a long time maybe i had better look about for more nuts for when those in the nest are gone i shall need more to eat yes i will look for nuts she started off through the woods but she had not gone very far when all of a sudden she saw something brown moving up in a tree in a second slicko hid herself under some leaves and waited she was in a place where she could watch the brown creature at first slicko thought it might be a big snake or maybe it the owl that had tried to get her in the night then as the brown creature moved closer slicko saw that it had a long tail and four legs and the legs had something like hands on the ends why it looks just like a brown hairy boy thought slicko and i'm afraid of boys mamma said they were dangerous i wonder what i had better do slicko hid deeper down in the leaves and a little later as the brown animal came closer the girl squirrel saw that it was not the kind of a boy she had ever seen before for though boys can climb trees they cannot climb up and down as fast as the brown animal was doing nor can they hang by their tails in fact as slicko knew boys have no tails and then slicko heard the brown animal say ha here are some of those chestnuts i must get some for though they are not as good as coconuts they will keep me from being hungry yes i'll get some ha thought slicko that creature is not a boy that's sure and it eats nuts just as we squirrels do i don't believe it will do me any harm i'm going out and see 
Slicko crawled out from under the leaves, and as soon as she moved, the brown creature called out, What is that? Who is there? Who is it? His voice was a sort of chatter and chirp, like that of some bird, but Slicko could understand it pretty well. It is I, if you please, said Slicko. I am a little girl squirrel, and I am staying at my aunt's nest, but she isn't home. Who are you, if you please? I am Mappo, the merry monkey, was the answer. But I can't see you. Where are you? Down in these leaves, answered Slicko, and she waved her tail so Mappo could see her. Oh, there you are cried the monkey, and down he scrambled beside her. "'What are you doing here?' asked Mappo. "'I am hiding away from a hunter and his dog,' went on the little squirrel. "'All our family ran away from our nest, and I came here. "'But my aunt is gone, too, so I am all alone.' "'Never mind,' said Mappo kindly. "'I am all alone also.' so we will keep each other company. Where did you come from? asked Slicko, who had never before seen a monkey. Oh, I used to live in a big woods with my brothers and sisters, said Mappo, but of late I have been with a circus. I ran away from my cage in the circus, though, and came to these woods, and I've had the most fun I met a comical little pig named... Oh, I know what he was named, interrupted Slicko. Oh, what was his name? asked Mappo. Squinty, cried the little girl squirrel. And he had the funniest nose, and one of his eyes was half shut, and... That's the one, exclaimed Mappo. How did you meet him? Then Slicko told of having talked to Squinty and Mappo also told how he had met the comical little pig, just as I have told you in the book about Squinty. But you said you used to be in a circus, spoke Slicko after a while. So I did, answered Mappo. What's a circus? Slicko wanted to know. What? Have you never seen a circus? asked Mappo. Well, I must show it to you. It's not far off, but I am not going back to it right away. Come along. Mappo, the merry monkey, started off through the forest with Slicko following. Pretty soon they saw a road in front of them, and on the other side of the road were some big white things that looked like houses people live in. Those are the circus tents, exclaimed Mappo. Listen, and you can hear the music. Slicko sat up on her tail and listened. She heard many strange sounds. End of chapter 4「Chapter 5 of Slicko the Jumping Squirrel」This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sunbeard. Slicko the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum. Slicko and Tum Tum. Mappo asked Slicko as she sat under a shade tree near the road and looked across the tents at the vacant lot. Is that what you call a circus, Mappo? That is a circus, little Slicko, answered the little monkey kindly. Slicko saw the white tents. She heard the bands playing music and she heard men and boys calling out strange words such as ice cream cones, pink lemonade, peanuts. The last word was the only one Slicko knew, for she had heard that before. Once a squirrel who had lived in a city park came to visit Slicko's mama and papa, and this city squirrel told how the children used to go to the park and feed the squirrels peanuts. So Slicko knew what peanuts were when she heard the circus boys and men shouting about them. So that is a circus, is it? asked little Slicko as she looked at the big white tents, 
all gay with colored flags, fluttering in the wind, and heard the nice music? Yes, answered Mappo. That is a circus. And you ran away from it? You ran away from a nice place like that? asked Slicko in surprise. Oh, well, I got tired of being in a cage all the while, said Mappo, the merry monkey. I am going back to it soon, I guess, as it is no fun to have to hunt for things to eat all the while. In the circus, though I did have to stay in a cage, I got all I wanted to eat without any trouble. Yes, I think I shall run back again soon. I should think if you had run away, they would come after you to find you, said Slicko. They did come once, spoke Mappo with a laugh. Once when I was in the woods talking to Squinty, the comical pig, some circus men came after me to catch me. But I ran away. They haven't caught me yet. And he laughed and chattered, showing his many white teeth. For a little while, Slicko and Mappo sat in the woods looking at the circus, and then, all of a sudden, the little girl squirrel cried out, Oh, Mappo, what are those funny animals as big as houses with two tails? What are they? <laughs> Laughed Mappo, the merry monkey. Two tails? Oh, <laughs> well, they do have two tails, said Slicko. What are they? That's just what Squinty the comical pig wanted to know, spoke Mappo. He thought they had two tails also. <laughs> well, haven't they? asked Slippo, frisking her big tail. No, answered Mappo. Those are elephants, and they only have one tail. The short thing is their tail, and the big long thing in front of them, hanging down, is their nose. Their nose, cried Slicko. What a funny nose. It's called a trunk, explained Mappo. But it is really the elephant's nose. He breathes through it, but he can also use it like a hand. He picks up what he wants to eat in it, and it is hollow, like the hose with which they fill the circus tubs, so we animals can drink. Through this hollow trunk, the elephant sucks up water, squirting it down his throat when he's thirsty. What a funny animal the elephant is, exclaimed Slicko. And how big! especially that first one with the two big white things sticking out of his mouth. What are those? Those are his teeth, or tusks, explained Mappo. But you need not be afraid of that big elephant. Why not? asked Slicko. Because he is the kindest and most jolly elephant in the whole circus, went on Mappo the monkey. His name is Tum Tum, and if you were to meet him, you would like him very much. Did Squinty the comical pig meet? Tum Tum? asked Slicko. No, Squinty did not have a chance, said Mappo, but he saw him. If I can, I'll call Tum Tum over here to see you. I'm sure you'd like him, and he'd give you a ride on his back. Oh, I'd be afraid to let him, exclaimed Slicko. Pooh, he wouldn't hurt a fly, laughed Mappo. Lots of children who come to the circus ride on Tum Tum's back. He is very kind to them, and he would be kind to you. Only if you should see him, be sure to tell him you're not a rat or a mouse. Well, of course I'm not a rat or a mouse, said Slicko. Why should I tell Tum Tum, the elephant, that I am not, when he can see for himself, if he has any eyes? Well, you do look a little like a great rat, said Mappo. Not that it's any harm, Slicko. But, you see, Tum Tum and other elephants are very much afraid of rats and mice. I don't know why unless they're afraid the little creatures will run up inside their trunks and make them sneeze. But anyhow, you're not a rat or a mouse. And if you see Tum Tum, be sure to tell him that, first thing. I will, promised Slicko. But maybe I won't see Tum Tum to speak to. Oh, you might, answered Mappo. You can't tell. Just then, the merry little monkey gave a jump and cried out, Ha! There come some circus men over this way. I think they're going to hunt for me again. I don't want to be caught just yet and be put back in my cage, so I'm going to run off and hide in the woods again. Goodbye, Slicko. I'm glad I met you. Goodbye, Mappo, cried the little girl squirrel. I'm glad I met you, and I'm sorry you're going to run away again, but I won't tell them where you are. I guess I'll go hide too. So Mappo the merry monkey ran off through the woods one way, and Slicko ran another, and they did not see each other again for some time. I might say that I expect to tell you in a book after this one some of the adventures of Mappo the Merry Monkey, 
but I have no room for him in this story. Slicko ran into the woods, jumping from tree to tree as she had been taught. She was all alone again, and she was feeling rather lonesome without Mappo or for some of her squirrel friends. Slicko made her way back to the nest where her aunt had lived. She rather hoped Mrs. Whitey might be back there waiting for her, but the nest in the tall tree was still empty. There was no sign of the nice old lady squirrel. Well, I guess I had better gather some nuts and hide them away, thought Slicko. I may have to stay in this nest a month or more until Papa and Mama make a new home for me and my sister and brothers. So Slicko scrambled down to the ground again and began to gather nuts and acorns. These she carried up to the nest, hiding them away under the leaves. She put some in a hollow stump on the ground not far away from the tree where the nest was. When Slicko had done this, she sat down on her tail, curling it up at her back like a feather to take a rest, for she was rather tired. My, she thought as she sat there, what a lot of things have happened to me since I had to leave my home. An owl got after me. I've seen a circus. I met a monkey and I seen the creature with two tails called an elephant. At least an elephant looks as though it had two tails. No matter what Mappo says, went on Slicko. I wonder if I shall ever meet Tum Tum and tell him I am not a rat or a mouse. What a funny thing it would be if I did. Slicko sat on the edge of the nest for some time, and then she began to feel hungry. I wish I had some of those peanuts I heard them talking about at the circus, said Slicko in a whisper. I know they must be good from what that city park squirrel said. And I wonder what pink lemonade and ice cream cones are. I don't believe they're good to eat. You can see that Slicko had many things to learn, things that you already know, such as that ice cream cones are good to eat. But if Slicko didn't know that, she knew other things that you children do not know such as where to find nuts and how to gnaw through the shells and get at the meat without using a nutcracker. All of a sudden, as Slicko was running toward the spring of water to get a drink, after her dinner, she heard a crashing in the bushes. I wonder if that's Mappo coming back, thought Slicko. She looked through the trees and saw something almost as large as a house and dark in color pushing through the bushes. Why, it's an elephant! It's Tum Tum! exclaimed Slicko as she saw the big creature with his trunk on one end and its tail on the other and two big long white teeth sticking out of its mouth. Yes, that surely is Tum Tum. Slicko spoke the last words out loud. Ha! Who is calling me? asked the circus elephant in his deep rumbling voice. Who is calling me? I spoke your name, Tum Tum, said Slicko. Here I am by this old stump. Tum Tum the Jolly Elephant looked at the little squirrel, and then he began to shiver and shake as hard as he could. He shook so hard that he shook a lot of pine cones down off of a pine tree up against which he was leaning. Oh my! Oh dear, this is terrible! cried Tum Tum in his deep, rumbling voice. Oh dear! End of Slicko and Tum Tum Recording by Sunbeard Chapter 6 of Slicko the Jumping Squirrel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sunbeard. Slicko the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum. Slicko Goes Nutting. Slicko was so surprised at first by the cries of Tum Tum and at the fear which the big elephant showed that she did not know what to think. It really seemed that Tum Tum was afraid of her, of a little jumping squirrel girl. Then Slicko happened to remember what Mappo had told her. If ever you see Tum Tum, the monkey had said, tell him at once that you're not a mouse or a rat. Ha! That's what I must do, thought Slicko. Tum Tum must be afraid of me. I'll speak to him. Scrambling halfway up the trunk of a tree to make herself higher and nearer to the big ears of Tum Tum, Slicko cried out in her chattering voice, I'm not a mouse, Tum Tum. I'm not a rat. Huh. Well, 
What's that? asked the elephant, flapping one of his ears sideways so he could hear better. What did you say? I said I was not a rat or a mouse. Oh, I'm so glad, cried the elephant, and he did not shiver and shake any more, and did not knock down any pine tree cones. At first, it might seem funny for a squirrel to say she would not hurt an elephant, because an elephant is so large. But I have told you that elephants are sometimes afraid even of such a little thing as a mouse. So you're not a rat, eh? asked the elephant of Slicko. No, Tum Tum, and I'm not a mouse either, answered the little girl squirrel. Ha, huh, how do you happen to know my name? asked Tum Tum. Mappo the very monkey told me, said the little girl squirrel. And Mappo told me I was to tell you I was not a mouse or a rat. I won't run up your trunk and scare you. Well, that's good, said Tum Tum. Now I can see clearly that you are a little squirrel. I like you. But what about that little rascal Mappo? Where is he? I came out to look for him. They want him back in his cage to ride around the circus ring on the back of a pony and do other tricks to make the children laugh. Oh, he ran away, said Slicko. He thought he heard some men coming after him. He said that he didn't want to go back to the cage just yet. He wants to have some fun in the woods. Well, well, he is a funny monkey, said Tum Tum. And I came all the way from the circus grounds to find him. But if he's gone, I won't look any farther. I'll go back to my tent, for the men may be coming after me. Oh, can't you stay here with me a little while? I'm so lonesome, spoke Slicko. Well, I might stay for a short time, Tum Tum said. But what are you doing in the woods all alone, little Slicko? Then the little girl squirrel told how she had had to run away from her own nest, and how she had not been able to find her aunt, and how she was now living all by herself in the woods. Well, I wish I could stay with you and keep you company, Slicko, said Tum Tum. But I belong back in the circus, and I guess you would rather jump through the tree branches and skip about in them than go as slowly as I have to go, crashing through the bushes. And certainly never could climb a tree and sleep in a nest as you do, went on Tum Tum with a jolly laugh. No, I suppose not, said Slicko. You are too big for a nest. Well, if you see Mappo, please send him back to me. I am so lonesome. If I see him, I will, Tum Tum answered, and then he walked back through the woods. Goodbye, Slicko, called the jolly elephant. I have to be in the show this afternoon. I have to make believe play ball and eat my dinner at a real table, and then I have to play the hand organ with my trunk. Those are some of my tricks. Oh, I met a pig who said he could do tricks, cried Slicko. Was his name Squinty? inquired the jolly elephant. Yes, said Slicko. His name was Squinty. Oh, I met him too, said Tum Tum. He was a comical little pig. But now I must hurry back. And on he went, crashing his way through the bushes. Some day, in another book, I shall tell you all the adventures of Tum Tum the jolly elephant. Slicko felt more lonesome than ever when the elephant had left her. She did not know what to do. And she wanted more than ever to see her mamma and papa and sister and brothers again. Then, all at once, Slicko thought of something. Oh, I forgot to ask Tum Tum to give me a ride on his back, exclaimed Slicko. Mappo said he would, as he was such a kind elephant. I'm going to call to him. So Slicko called in her chattering voice. Tum Tum! Tum Tum! Yes, I hear you. What is it? asked the elephant, stopping. Would you please give me a ride on your back? begged Slicko. Mappo, the merry monkey, said you gave children at the circus rides, and I am so little you would hardly fill me. Of course I'll give you a ride, cried Tum Tum. I thought I was forgetting something, he went on as he crashed back through the bushes. I meant to invite you for a little ride on my back, went on Tum Tum. Why, I shouldn't fill you any more than I should a feather, Slicko. Besides, I am very strong. I could carry ten children on my back and hardly know it. Oh, indeed, you must be very strong, cried the little squirrel girl. 
Tum Tum, with a jolly noise that sounded much like a laugh, as any elephant can make, stood under the branch of the tree on which Slicko was perched. Hop down, little squirrel, invited the big jolly elephant. Down hopped Slicko, landing on the back of Tum Tum, and then what a fine ride she had. Tum Tum could step over bushes that would have taken Slicko some time to climb. In some bushes, Tum Tum trampled under his big feet as though they were straw. Other bushes, the elephant pushed his big body through as easily as the clown in the circus jumps off the horse's back through the paper hoop. Do you like riding on my back? asked Tum Tum, swinging along. Oh, it's just fine, cried Slicko, as she sat there with her tail held over her head like a sun umbrella. But don't go too far with me, Tum Tum, please. I won't, said the elephant, and pretty soon he had turned back with Slicko and left her on the same branch from which she had jumped, right near her aunt's nest. Well, goodbye once more, Slicko, called Tum Tum. I may see you again tomorrow. And if you meet that Mappo, tell him he's wanted back in the circus. I'll tell him, promised Slicko. Once more, the little jumping girl squirrel was all alone in the big woods. Somewhere in the forest were her father and mother, and her sister and brothers were somewhere about. But just where, Slicko did not know. Well, thought the little creature in a way squirrels and other animals have of thinking, well, I guess I shall have to stay alone tonight again and perhaps for many more nights and days. I wonder what will become of me if I shall ever see my folks again. Oh, dear. Slicko felt a little sad for a moment, but then she knew that she would have to be brave and do things for herself, since there was no one to help her. I think I'll put some more leaves and some cotton from the milkweed plant in Aunt Whitey's nest, thought Slicko. That will make it warmer. Fixing up the nest so it would be nicer to stay in took Slicko until nearly dark. Then, after she had carried some nuts up to the nest so she would have them ready for the morning, Slicko curled up in the soft leaves and went to sleep. Nothing bothered her this night. No bad owl with big round staring eyes tried to get the little squirrel. Perhaps the owl, which had tried it before, was sure the nest was empty and that he could not get anything to eat from it. At any rate, the owl did not come and Slicko was glad of it. In the morning, after her breakfast, having had a drink and washed at the spring, Slicko said, I think I'd better go off in the woods nutting today. I shall need many nuts to eat if I have to stay here all winter, and I had better begin to gather them now before they are all gone. Slicko knew, as do all squirrels, the best places in the woods to look for nuts. Soon the little girl squirrel had found many chestnuts, acorns, hickory nuts, and beech nuts. These she carried a few at a time up to her aunt's nest house. If Aunt Whitey should come back, they would be enough for her and me too, thought Slicko. The storehouse of the nest was almost full of nuts, but still Slicko was not satisfied. I must get more, she said to herself, for we may have a long winter with much snow. Well, Slicko knew how hard the winter was for squirrels and all animals. So the next day Slicko went off nutting again. She had not gone very far through the woods before she came to a little grassy place, and there, in the middle of it, Slicko saw a nice pile of nuts, all gathered up, ready to be taken away. Oh, that's just fine, thought Slicko to herself. The nuts are all in a nice heap, and I don't have to pick them up one by one and carry them home. I can just take a whole paw full at once. Now, Slicko was a wise little squirrel in some ways, but she had many things yet to learn. She did not stop to think that nuts in the woods never heap themselves up in a pile without some animal or some person doing it. Slicko thought the nuts were put there just for her, but it was all a trick, as you shall soon see. Of course, Slicko did not at once jump down to get the nuts. She knew enough not to do that, for she had often been told some animal might be waiting to grab her. So she looked all around, and seeing nothing, down she scrambled. As Slicko came nearer to the pile of nuts, and saw how nice they looked, she said to herself, Oh, there will be enough for all winter. How lovely! But there was something else besides the nuts there on the ground, though Slicko did not see it. If she had noticed it, and had kept out of the way, she might not have had as many adventures as she did have. But little squirrels are not always wise and smart any more than real children are. Right up to the pile of nuts scampered Slicko. She took up some chestnuts in her paws that were like little hands, and then, all of a sudden, something clicked and snapped, and Slicko felt herself caught 
by one leg and held tightly. End of chapter 6. Slicko Goes Nutting. Recording by Sunbeard. Chapter 7 of Slicko the Jumping Squirrel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Slicko the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum. Chapter 7 Slicko is Caught. Poor Slicko was so surprised at first, and her leg pained her so much from whatever it was that had grasped it, that the little squirrel lay quite still for a moment. Her heart beat very fast, and she thought of the many dangers which her father and mother had told her might happen to little squirrels. "'And I'm sure something dreadful has happened to me,' thought Slicko, as she looked all around with her bright eyes. Yes. Something dreadful has happened. I wonder what it is. Can it be that an owl or a hawk or a snake has caught me? Slicko tried to think of these different birds and the snake, for each one has a different way of catching a squirrel, and Slicko wanted to make sure which it was that had hold of her. Then, as she heard no fluttering of wings, which she would have heard had it been a big bird which had caught her, and, as she did not hear the hiss of an angry snake, she felt sure it was none of those dangers. But what can it be that has hold of my leg? thought Slicko. She looked down, and there, partly hidden under the grass and the pile of nuts, where Slicko had not seen it before, was a steel trap and her leg was caught in that trap, between two pieces of steel that pressed together as hard as the rubber rollers of the ringer press on the clothes on wash day. Oh dear, thought poor Slicko, I am caught in a trap. Papa and Mama told me to be careful of traps, but I didn't see this one. I guess I was thinking too much of the nuts. Oh dear, what shall I do? How can I get out? That is what Slicko thought as she lay there, her leg in the trap, hurting her very much. All animals, when they are caught in a trap, at once begin to think of how they can get out. Some think one way, and some another, but they all think, or else how could some of them get out the way they do? Of course, I don't mean to say that animals think just the way we do, any more than they talk the way we do, but they talk and think in a language of their own. Slicko was not a very old squirrel, and this was the first time she had ever been in a trap. If she had been an older squirrel, she would not have gone near the pile of nuts, for an older squirrel would have been sure they were put there on purpose to fool some animal. But Slicko did not think. That was why she was caught in the trap. Oh, I must get out, chattered poor Slicko. I must get away from here, or someone may come and catch me. Slicko tried to pull her leg out of the trap, but the strong spring of it held the steel jaws tightly together. Some animal traps have sharp teeth on the steel jaws that spring together and they hurt very much. But this trap was not that kind, and Slicko was glad of it. So the only thing that happened to her leg was that it was badly pinched and squeezed tightly. Still, she knew that if she did not pull herself away, something else dreadful might happen to her. Well, said Slicko to herself, when she had tried several times to pull her leg out and could not, if I can't get loose from the trap, maybe I can pull the trap with me off into the woods, and I can find some other big man squirrel to help me get loose. That's what I'll do. But when Slicko tried to run off, with the trap still fastened to her leg, she found that she could not. The trap was chained to a tree, 
and Slicko was held fast. Oh dear, cried the little squirrel. I'm never going to get loose. I wish my mama or papa would come. But papa and mama squirrel were away off in the woods, and they thought their little daughter was safe with her aunt Whitey. They did not know all that had happened. Slicko tried and tried again to get out of the trap, or to pull the trap away with her, but she could not. Then, as she was pretty tired, and as her little heart was beating very fast, she lay down to rest. Finding some of the nuts close to her nose, she began to eat one, for she was quite hungry, even if she was fast in a trap. After Slicko had eaten a few nuts, she felt better. She was a little stronger, too, and she thought perhaps now she could get out of the trap. But when she tried, the jaws of it held her as tightly as ever. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, cried poor Slicko. All at once she heard, off in the woods, the sound of bushes being trampled down. Twigs and branches snapped and broke, and Slicko knew something was coming. I hope it isn't a bear or any bad animal that will get me, thought the little girl squirrel. With her bright eyes snapping, Slicko watched and waited. All of a sudden, through the bushes, straight for the place where Slicko lay, near the pile of nuts, came a boy. Slicko knew it was a boy because he was just like the hunter man, only smaller. But the boy had no gun, and Slicko was glad of that. However, there was a dog with him, and for that, Slicko was sorry. Here, Rover! Rover, called the boy to his dog, for Rover was running all about, sniffing under stones and bushes. Here, Rover, let's see if we have anything in our trap, the boy called. Ah, so he is the one who put the trap here to catch me, thought Slicko. She could understand some man or boy talk, though she could not speak it herself, just as your dog understands how to run to you when you say, Come here. But though he understands you, he cannot make you understand him. Rar rar, barked the dog with the boy. Rar rar. Yes, I hear you. What is it? The boy asked. Rar rar, rar rar, barked the dog. And Slicko saw him looking straight at her. I guess the dog was trying to tell the boy there was something in the trap. But the boy didn't understand dog talk very well. Rawr, rawr, barked the dog again. And then, as Slicko tried to hide herself down under the leaves where the dog could not see her, that dog barked louder than ever. Rawr, 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 rawr. Well, you're making a lot of fuss, exclaimed the boy, as he pushed his way through the bushes. Have you caught something, Rover, old boy? Rawr, rawr, yes, answered the dog. Then the boy came up to the trap. Ha! I have caught something, he cried. A squirrel, too. I thought I would if I piled up those nuts there and hid the trap near them. Ha! I've caught a squirrel. Oh, what a mean boy you are, said Slicko to herself. You set the trap on purpose to catch me. Oh, how mean! Now this boy was not mean exactly, or cruel, as you shall soon see. He was only thoughtless, as most boys are. He never really intended to hurt their little squirrel. Perhaps he thought the fur on a squirrel's leg was so thick that the trap, springing shut, would not hurt. And, really, Slicko was not hurt such a terrible lot. But she felt badly enough, let me tell you. Yes, I have a squirrel, the boy cried and he seemed real glad of it. Now I can take it home and tame it. Slicko did not know what tame meant, but she thought if it meant being caught by your leg in a trap that she would not like it at all. Yes, went on the boy, I'll take the squirrel home and tame it and teach it tricks. Ha, tricks, said Slicko to herself. 
Where have I heard that word before? Oh, I know. Squinty the comical pig could do tricks, and so could Tum Tum the jolly elephant. Well, maybe if this boy teaches me some tricks, it will not be so bad. Then I could go home and surprise Chatter, Fluffy, and Nutto. I don't believe they can do tricks. Slicko watched the boy and the dog. The dog was barking and jumping about in the leaves. He seemed quite excited at seeing the squirrel in the trap. Quiet, Rover, lie down, said the boy, and Rover minded like the good dog he was. Now, let's see how I am going to get this squirrel home, the boy went on. I ought to have brought a box. I wonder if he means to take me to his home or my home, thought Slicko. I guess he must mean his home, for he doesn't know where mine is. I don't know myself. I hope the trap didn't break her leg, the boy went on. I don't believe it did, for the spring wasn't very strong. Oh, I'm sure my leg is broken, thought poor Slicko. It hurts very much. The boy put out his hand very slowly to take the little squirrel out of the trap. I wonder if you'll bite he said. Ha, that's so. I can bite, said Slicko out loud. But, to the boy, her talk only sounded like chattering. Slicko had sharp teeth, and very strong. They had to be, for with them she had to gnaw off the shell of hard hickory nuts. So Slicko knew she could bite fiercely if she wanted to. But I don't know that I want to, thought Slicko. If I bite... The boy will be angry at me, and if he is to teach me tricks, it will be better if we are friends. No, I won't bite him, though I could if I wanted to. Slowly and carefully, the boy put out his hand toward Slicko. I wish I had a thick pair of gloves, he said. Then if you bit, it wouldn't hurt. I got bit by a squirrel once, and I don't want it to happen again. I won't bite you said Slicko, though of course the boy could not understand her. Now his hand was on the soft fur of Slicko's back, and he stroked her gently. Poor little squirrel, said the boy. I'm sorry you were caught in the trap, and I hope you're not hurt much. I, I, I guess I'm never going to set any more traps. The boy felt sorry now, for poor Slicko looked at him with such a sorrowful look in her bright eyes that it really seemed as if she were crying tears of pain. That is, if squirrels can cry, they can feel pain at any rate. So you see, though it was a sad thing for Slicko to be caught in a trap, in one way it was a good thing, for it taught the boy a lesson and made him more kind-hearted. I'll soon have you loose, little squirrel, the boy went on. Then he quickly pressed on the spring of the trap with one hand, while he held Slicko with the other. The jaw of the trap came open, and Slicko's leg was loose. And oh, how good it felt not to be squeezed as she had been. Then, all of a sudden, Slicko felt herself lifted up and put into a soft, dark place. A place as dark as the deepest, darkest part of the nest at home, the cellar part where the nuts were stored away for winter. End of chapter 7。Chapter 8 of Slicko the Jumping Squirrel。This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Slicko the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum Chapter 8 Slicko's New Home Slicko the Jumping Squirrel found herself all huddled up in a heap in the soft, dark place. She did not feel much like jumping just then. Indeed, she could not have jumped if she had wished, for there was no room. Besides, her leg that had been caught in the trap hurt her quite a lot though not so much as it had at first i i wonder where i am thought slicko as she tried to look about her 
soon she could see better than at first and as a squirrel's eyes are made to see in the dark much as are the eyes of the owl bird slicko could soon make out where she was she was down inside a sort of bag very soft and cosy but even though it was so soft slicko could not get out she tried but there was no hole even the top through which she had been put in was tightly closed slicko tried her teeth on some of the soft stuff but it tickled her little red tongue so she stopped i wonder where i am thought slicko again and though she did not know it she was in the boy's coat pocket and he had pinned the flap down over it so the little squirrel could not get out later on slicko took many trips in that same pocket and was not afraid but this time her little heart beat very fast for she did not know what was going to happen to her well i don't believe i'll try to catch any more squirrels said the boy i'll take this trap home with me ah that's good thought slicko if he takes the trap away no more squirrels would be caught that's very good and i guess i'll take some of these nuts home to feed my new squirrel went on the boy speaking out loud the way boys do sometimes especially if they have their dogs with them bow wow barked rover the dog bow wow that was his way of saying that he too thought it would be a good thing to take home some of the nuts slicko heard the nuts rattling into the other pocket of the boy who had caught her and then she felt him walking off with her through the woods he went as slicko could tell for she heard the rattle and crack of the bushes as the boy pushed his way through them after what seemed to slicko a long time she fell asleep in the boy's pocket and when she awoke she was in such a bright light that it made her eyes blink very fast the boy had opened his pocket and had taken slicko out in his hands oh what have you got bob asked a small girl one of the boy's sisters a little squirrel he answered where did you get it asked another girl i caught it in a trap in the woods sally the boy answered oh how cruel to catch a poor little squirrel in a trap exclaimed the first little girl oh i didn't hurt it said bob and when it gets tame i'm going to teach it some tricks are you going to put the squirrel in a cage with a wheel asked the girl whose name was molly yes as soon as papa gets me that kind of a cage the boy said but until then i'll let it stay in a box i hope it doesn't get away like squinty your pig did spoke sally oh no i won't let the squirrel get away said the boy ha thought slicko squinty the pig i wonder if this is the boy who made a pet of squinty if it is the same one i am sure he will be kind to me where do you suppose squinty is now asked sally back in the pen with the other pigs the boy replied after he got away he grew too big to keep for a pet but this squirrel won't grow too big i'm sorry for that thought slicko for if i grew big enough i too might be allowed to go back to my home but i will wait and see what will happen i will be as good as i can and learn all the tricks i can and the boy and his sisters will love me oh isn't she cute cried one of the little girls as she put her finger on the soft fur of slicko's back look out she might bite exclaimed the other little girl indeed i'll not chattered slicko i wouldn't be so impolite as that that is what slicko said but of course the boy and his sister could not understand but they could see that slicko was very gentle and as she lay there in the boy's warm hand the two little girls petted her and loved slicko now i'll put her in a box the boy said and give her some nuts to eat and some water to drink that will be fine thought slicko for she was very thirsty and hungry a little later she found herself in a small wooden box in one corner were some nuts in another a dish of water and in a third corner some nice soft cotton almost like the kind that comes on the inside of the pods of the milkweed plant 
well this isn't like my home nest in the tree nor like aunt whitey's nest thought slicko but as long as i have to stay here i might as well make the best of it i can eat and drink anyhow i shall not be hungry or thirsty slicko took up a hickory nut in her paws that were like little hands and sitting up on her hind legs with her tail spread out over her like an umbrella she began to eat the meat of the nut oh look cried one of the girls who was watching come and see the squirrel eat sally ha it isn't so wonderful just to eat thought slicko i wonder how those girls would like it if i came to look on every time they ate slicko could not get away so she had to eat with the boy's sisters looking on not that slicko minded very much for she was beginning to like her new home and she felt sure that she would be in no danger from dogs or other animals and if she got enough to eat water to drink and had a nice warm place to sleep in what more could a squirrel ask slicko's leg hurt her a little bit but it was getting better all the while and she was feeling happier and happier every minute true she would have been very glad if her papa and mamma and her sister and brothers had been with her but then she knew she could not have everything she wanted and it's just wonderful that the same boy who has me had squinty the comical pig for his pet thought slicko squinty said the boy was good and kind and i'm sure he'll teach me some nice tricks i shall love to learn tricks for two or three days slicko stayed in the box where the boy had first put her every day she was given fresh water and this was what she needed almost more than she did nuts to eat all animals need water especially in hot weather so if ever you have a squirrel or any other pet see to it that they have all the cool clean water they wish to drink i wonder when my new cage is to come whatever a cage is thought slicko after she had been in the box about a week i'm anxious to see it i wonder what that wheel is the boy spoke about slicko was soon to know however one day when slicko was eating nuts in her box she looked up at the top over which had been fastened a bit of wire so she could not get out and looking down at her slicko saw the boy's big dog staring in bow wow barked the dog chatter chat chit chat chatter went slicko that was her way of saying how do you do she did not feel afraid for she knew the dog could not get at her in the box oh bob the dog is after your squirrel suddenly called molly yes come quickly shouted sally bow wow barked the dog and he seemed to say don't worry i wouldn't hurt that little squirrel for the world i just want to look at her oh rover won't hurt slicko said the boy who had given his new pet the same name as had the squirrel's mamma in fact slicko was so smooth and slick and so clean that it would have been hard to get any other name to fit her as well as did slicko see the dog and squirrel will be good friends said the boy with that he reached in and lifted slicko out of the box holding her close to rover rover put out his red tongue and touched slicko with it and slicko put out her tiny paw and touched rover that was her way of shaking hands see they are friends said the boy soon when slicko gets a little tamer i'm going to let her run out of the cage and go all over the house she may run away like squinty the comical pig said molly oh i don't believe she will answered the boy just then some one called bob bob where are you come here the new cage for your squirrel has come oh it's my new home thought slicko i wonder what it is like End of chapter eight Chapter 9 of Slicko the Jumping Squirrel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck DeSully. Slicko the Jumping Squirrel by Richard Barnum. Slicko does some tricks. Slicko was put back into the wooden box, and Bob fastened the wire over the top again. Ha! The boy didn't need to do that, thought the little squirrel. I won't run away 
at least not until I see my new house. The boy and his sisters went to where their mama had called them, and soon they came running back again. The boy carried a big wire cage, something like the one in which Slicko had once seen a canary bird flying about. But this new cage for Slicko was much larger, and at one end was a big round wheel of wire, something like a merry-go-round, only it whirled the other way, like a hoop, and there were no wooden animals or seats on the squirrel wheel. What can it be for? thought Slicko. Bob, the boy, lifted Slicko up out of her little wooden box. Let's see how you like your new cage, he said. Oh, but there's nothing for her to eat or drink in it, cried one of the girls. I'll put in some nuts and water, Bob said. Come, Slicko, go into your new cage. Bob opened a little wire door and thrust Slicko through it into the cage. The door went shut with a click and a slam. That reminded Slicko of the time she had been caught in the trap. She looked around quickly, wondering if there were a trap near her now. But she saw only the clean new wire cage with little dishes for nuts and water, a little covered over dark place where she could crawl in during the day and go to sleep in the dark. And then there was that great big wire wheel that spun around very easily when Bob touched it with his finger. Oh, I'm never going in that, thought Slicko, somewhat afraid. She crouched down and looked carefully all around her new cage. She wanted to see if there were any danger near. But all she saw through the wires was the boy, his two sisters, and Rover, the dog she had grown to like very much. Oh, I guess it will be all right here, thought Slicko. I will not be afraid. Doesn't she look cute in there? asked Molly, laughing. She certainly does, agreed Sally. You wait until I teach her some tricks, spoke the boy. Then she'll be worth looking at. Slicko made up her mind she would learn the tricks as soon as she could. Then I'll be like Squinty, the comical pig, she said to herself. Soon Slicko felt quite at home in her new cage. She went inside the little bedroom. That was pretty dark, even in the daytime. Squirrels and all wild animals like to be in the dark and off by themselves once in a while. Inside the little bedroom, which was made of tin and wire, like the rest of the cage, was some soft cotton, and in this Slicko could cuddle up and keep warm, even when winter came. And, as I have said, there was a dish for nuts and another for water. These the boy filled, and soon Slicko was eating her first meal in her new home. I wish she'd go in the wheel and ride it, said Molly. She will, after a while, the boy said. I know how to make her. Slicko wondered how he would do it, but she could not guess. For several days the little jumping squirrel lived in her new cage. The boy and his sisters would come to watch her and bring her nice things to eat. So Slicko soon became real tame. Often other children would come to look at her. Sometimes the boy would take her out and put her in his pocket, as he had done on the day he brought Slicko from the woods, after she had been caught in the trap. Then Slicko would stick her head out, just a little bit, and all the children would exclaim, Oh, isn't she cute? Slicko did not know exactly what cute meant, but she tried to be as nice and polite as she could. Have you taught your squirrel any tricks yet? asked Molly of her brother one day. No, but I am going to try one now. Do you want to watch? Indeed I do, said the little girl. Slicko saw the boy take all the nuts out of the eating dish. I wonder what he is doing that for, the little squirrel thought. I'm hungry, and I want to eat those nuts. But the boy took every one. What are you going to do? asked his sister. You'll soon see, he answered with a laugh. I'm going to teach Slicko her first trick. Then the boy placed two or three nice, sweet, juicy chestnuts inside the wheel of the squirrel cage. This wheel went around and around, just as a barrel rolls over the ground. Only the wire wheel of the squirrel cage stayed right in the same place, whirling about as does a merry-go-round. Now, when Slicko goes in to get the nuts, she'll make the wheel go around, the boy said to his sisters. The faster she runs, the faster the wheel will go, and she'll be doing a trick. Oh, let's watch her, cried Sally. Well, you may watch all you like, said Slicko to herself, but I am not going in that wheel. I'm afraid. So she stayed in the other part of the cage, looking at the chestnuts, and wishing she could get them, for she was getting more and more hungry every minute. Maybe I can pull one out without going in the wheel myself, thought Slicko. She reached her paw in through the little round hole that led into the wheel from her cage. She could almost touch the chestnuts, but not quite. There, she's going in, cried one of the girls softly. But Slicko did not go. If she wasn't afraid, she'd go in and have a ride, the boy said. Come on, Slicko, he called. It won't hurt you. Slicko did not want to. However, she kept getting more and more hungry, and those chestnuts looked so good. I'm going to try it, said the little jumping squirrel to herself finally. I don't believe that boy would do me any harm. Very slowly and carefully, Slicko stepped into the moving wheel. It rocked gently to and fro, 
As soon as the squirrel was all the way inside, it moved more. She felt as though she were falling, and then, so that she should not fall, she took two or three little steps. The wire wheel seemed to slide out from under her. It went whirling around, and the faster Slicko ran, the faster the wheel went. The little squirrel stayed right in the same place, but the wire wheel went round and round on her pattering feet. There she goes, cried Sally. Oh, see how fast she can run, exclaimed Molly. Yes, she has learned to do the trick, said the boy. I thought she would get so hungry that she would go in after the chestnuts, and then she'd make the wheel whirl. And that was just what Slicko had done. She was so surprised at the fast motion of the wheel that she did not think to eat the nuts inside. But now, after whirling about for some time, Slicko did not run so fast. The wheel went slower and slower and finally stopped. The nuts, which had been rattling around with Slicko, dropped down beside her, and she began to eat them, sitting up on her hind legs and holding them in her front paws while she gnawed off the shell. "'Oh, isn't she just too cute for anything?' cried Sally. "'Just lovely,' said her sister Molly. "'Well, that's one trick,' the boy said. "'It's the easiest of all. "'Now that she knows the wheel won't hurt her, "'she'll often take a whirl in it.' "'Yes,' said Slicko to herself, "'as she heard Bob say this. "'I think I shall.' "'And from then on, "'Slicko was no longer afraid "'of the whirling wheel of her cage. "'Bob did not have to put any more nuts in it "'to get her to go in. "'Slicko liked it and went in herself "'several times a day. "'It gave her something to do, "'like playing a game.' The cage where Slicko was kept was too small to let her run about and jump very much, and the wheel was just the very thing. On that, Slicko could pretend she was running a race, as she used to do with her brothers and sister in the woods. Oh, I wonder what has become of Chatter and all the rest of them, thought Slicko many times, as she thought of her former home, and I wonder if I shall ever see them again. What are you doing, Bob? asked Molly, one day as she saw her brother pasting some paper over a little wooden hoop. It was just like those the men in the circus jumped through, only smaller. I am getting ready for another trick for Slicko, he said. Do you think you can get her to jump through one of those paper-covered hoops? asked Sally. I think so, replied Bob. I'm going to try. Slicko was quite tame by this time, and often would be allowed to run about the room, being let out of her cage. Sometimes Bob would sit in a chair and put some nuts in his pocket. Then Slicko would run along the floor, crawl up Bob's leg, dive down into his pocket, and pull out the nuts. That's another trick, Bob would say with a laugh. My squirrel is getting to be very smart. But how are you going to get her to jump through a paper hoop? asked Molly. I'll soon show you, said Bob. By this time he had two or three hoops all ready, pasted over with thin red, white, and blue paper, so that they looked very pretty indeed. Now, Slicko, said Bob, as he took the little squirrel out of her wire cage, you are going to learn a new trick today, and I want you to pay strict attention and do as I tell you. Bob took a piece of sweet apple, of which Slicko was very fond, and put it on top of a little box on the dining room table. Then he put Slicko down at the other end of the table, and stood near her, with one of the paper hoops in his hand. Now, Slicko, said Bob, as he pointed at the apple, that is for you, if you do as I want you to do. Go get the apple, Slicko. Slicko knew what apple was. She could smell it, and she thought it must be meant for her, she scampered toward it, but, when she had almost reached it, she found Bob holding a paper hoop out in front of her. The hoop was between Slicko and the apple. Slicko started to go around to one side, to get out of the way of the hoop, but Bob moved it, so that it was still in front of her. Well, I can go the other way, thought Slicko. But when she turned the other way, there was still the paper hoop in front of her. It was between her and the apple, and she wanted that apple very much. Ha! thought Slicko. If Bob doesn't take that paper hoop out of my way, I'll jump right through it and get the apple anyhow. End of Slicko Does Some Tricks Recording by Chuck DeSilly